day incarnate, obviously the material bodies and spiritual bodies are created by what? <coughs> that lovely thing called sex that all of you want to do. Okay? <laughs> So genetic, your genetic creation at the spirit body level is created at the same time as your genetic creation in the material body level. A spirit form and a material form is created at the same time, and the soul incarnates. Now, when you say, when I say incarnates, there's this viewpoint that most people have that it goes inside somehow. The truth is that the soul actually attaches itself to those bodies. Isn't the soul not alone? If, if this is a, a soul they have to be born on the same day then basically. No. Oh. No. Because if they incarnate, if they get split up, <coughs> it's not half a soul floating around somewhere. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. When what happens is the riskier half of the soul incarnates first, and the other half of the soul remains in this soul state until it is attracted to an incarnation as well. Now there might be a gap of up to even 20 years between those two events. What do you mean by riskier? Sorry? Okay. What do you mean by riskier? Usually one half of the soul has a, has a more riskier risk. nature, a riskier personality, part of the personality, okay. and it's that half that incarnates. Where's the other half of your soul? Uh, on Earth. Yes. <laughs> you want to know? Yes. <laughs> no, I'm not telling you. <laughs> no, the reason why is because she needs to go through this whole process of emotional, uh, this emotional process too. And obviously if she's got the projections of lots of other people doing that, then it's going to be very, very difficult for her. So, so but I do know exactly who she is. And, uh, How do you know that? I knew the instant I looked into her eyes. So, was it the same for you in your first incarnation? Yes. You knew the instant you looked into her eyes? Yes. yes. So, where are we always the male and the female? No. Okay. The Apostle John, uh, you would have all heard of the Apostle John like, from the Bible. Mm -hmm. well, the Apostle John has a male soul. Who was your first? Sorry? In your first incarnation? Yeah. Which person or What's your I'm happy to tell you that. That was Mary Magdalene. <laughs> That's as far as I'm going to go. <laughs> what happens is that as you get rid of all of your soulmate-based injuries, you will be able to recognise your soulmate. A lot of attractions on earth at the moment are based around injury attraction. In other words, my injury is compatible with your injury, so we get together. Mm -hmm. right? Now, when one of them grows, what happens then? The relationship disbands often. Right. Now, a soulmate relationship isn't like that. A soulmate relationship is not based on injuries. In fact, the lady who is my soulmate now, my soulmate always has been my soulmate, by the way, but the physical form she is in now, I would not normally have been attracted to because of my injuries that I've retained during this experience. Are there many soulmates you could have in the world? No. Well, how do you get trapped on the outside of the world and the different religions? Can that happen? Uh, certainly, but what happens, if you understand the soulmate process, what happens is the first half of the soul incarnates, right? Now, let's say it's a baby and then it moves to another country. What will happen is the second half of the soul, there's a, there's a very, very strong law of attraction between the two halves of the soul. And the second half of the soul follows around, if you like, the first half of the soul. And when it's ready to incarnate, when I say ready, it's based on the law of attraction from parents and so forth, it incarnates very close to the location of the first half of the soul. But of course the first half could move back to its original home. Right? And then they might be a world, you know, the whole world apart. But the law of attraction operates in such a way that 
those two will eventually probably meet each other during their lifetime on Earth, in particular if they are sensitive to their own emotional state. Um, there is really only one lifetime. I've really only had one. The soul, remember, I'm talking about the soul. The soul is the real you, so there is only one lifetime. Yours, right now. Uh, because of the injuries. The more, the more injuries I have, I can walk past my soulmate in the street and not recognise her or him. Or, you know, yep. Does it, it has to happen for the other half to die as well? Combine in the spiritual world again? And no. Then split up again? Or? No. 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 By the way, the two soulmate halves can recombine here on earth. It's never been done before, but they can. The two halves of the soul can also recombine even if one half is in the spirit world and one half is on earth. And the two halves of the soul can recombine in the spirit world, and that certainly has been done many times. What does it mean? Well, let's get to there first. We've got okay. the, it's a fair bit between here and there. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do that. So that's the process. So that process I would call the process of incarnation. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Incarnation. 